Hey, I'm Will Marshall. I'm here at Paramind in San Francisco, and I'm here to show you a technique in Ableton I use that lets me create custom delay chains where my uh, delay can evolve and morph and change over time in pretty much any way I want. Now, this is, to my mind, a big step up from using standard uh, delay plugins like the built-in Ableton delay plugins or even kind of third-party plugins like, you know, Waves H delay is a popular one. So if we look at uh, a delay, and we just look at the simple delay plugin in Ableton, I'm gonna link the two sides, turn the dry weight up, turn the feedback up a little bit, and we've got this on send A. And I have this clap sample on this drum rack here. So if I send that clap through to send A, we get a totally standard delay. And that delay is, as you probably know, an exact repetition of the same sound um, in this case, a uh, uh, quarter note uh, each time. So it's just going boom, 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 boom. An eighth note? Yeah. Uh, an eighth note, rather. And it's just going boom, 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 like that. Now, this is fine for a lot of purposes, like these kind of simple digital delays have their place. But it's an exact repetition of the same sound every time, which means there's no evolution to the sound, except the fact that the uh, volume dies away. So, obviously, the uh, built-in plugins in Ableton have a lot of options for dealing with uh, dealing with this. So if we take um, say filter delay, for example, we can set it up with very similar settings, but filter delay has this filter built into it. So if I uh, turn this up to zero, turn the dry all the way down, you can see that each time the uh, the delay goes through, sort of out of the filter delay and then gets fed back, it goes through the filter again. So the first repetition has gone through the filter once, the second repetition has gone through the filter twice, and so on. And this lets the sound uh, evolve, um, gives it a lot of dimension and space. So that's super cool. And that instantly like opens up a whole kind of new world of delays that feel like they have musical expression. Now, Originally, delays were done using tape loops. We would actually write onto tape, have the tape loop go around, and then read back off the tape. And one of the uh, side effects, it's actually a really positive side effect, of writing and reading to tape, is that every time you write and read, read from tape, a certain amount of distortion and degradation is inevitable in the uh, um, write-read process. And so that means each time around you go through a tape delay, as they're called, you are changing the tone of the signal um, in a, either a subtle or an obvious way, depending kind of on how hard you're driving the tape delay. Now, this is wonderful. Like, tape delays have a really natural sound. And there are some good tape delay plugins. I don't happen to have any on my computer right now, but um, I'm a big foam fan of uh, Ohm Boys. Uh, they have a real, or I think Ohm Force's Ohm Boys delay has kind of tape saturation algorithms built into it. Waves H delay is another one. The problem with all these products is that they are a delay plugin that has some effects built into it. You can you can only use the effects that come with it. And so while they're really good, and I use them a lot of the time, you're not afforded the flexibility to process your audio in any way you want. So with Ableton, we can actually construct a custom delay chain that will let us put any effect we want in that loop so that our audio goes through the delay loops back through and each time we'll go through whatever set of effects we have in place. And then furthermore, um, because creating delay chains like this is a little, it's a little wild and crazy and we'll get to that in a minute, you can actually MIDI map the uh, feedback and the controls and you can kind of ride the delay and get these very musical expressions um, out. I often actually uh, do this or do something similar to this and bus it out through analog gear and kind of play with the analog gear while the um, delay is running. I'm not going to show you that today, it's just a, it's an option, something you could play with if you have analog gear kicking around. So the way we do this is really simple. Um, a delay accepts audio in the input, it delays the audio by a certain amount, so it just pushes it back in time by an amount, either an amount in milliseconds or amount in musical time, and then it sends it to the output of the delay. The only other factor there is a feedback control, and the feedback control basically feeds a percentage, just by a percentage by volume, of that audio signal back into the start of the delay. So the, the delay kind of keeps looping through this delay plugin. Now, the problem with that is, as I said, you're limited to whatever effects are built into that delay plugin. So what we're gonna do is delete this. We're gonna bring up the simple delay again, um, bring that down, put it onto two, 100% wet, link. And so it's just a simple delay, that's all. But instead of using the feedback, 
which loops the audio within the simple delay plugin. What we're gonna do is enable send A on send A, and this means that send A can actually feed back to itself, which obviously causes a feedback cycle. And so in this case, the audio flow is that the audio comes in here, gets delayed by the delay, goes out the send, and then comes back into the send. And so you're looping through the entire um, set of effects, whatever you've got down here. And this control basically amounts to a um, percent. So this is almost 100%. It's not quite because uh, this volume is down. If that's at zero, this delay will go on forever because essentially it has 100% feedback. Not all that useful, but good to know. So where does this leave us? We can now put any effect in the signal pathway that we want. Now, before you start playing with this, this can cause feedback, which can hypothetically blow out your speakers and your ears. So you're gonna want to put a limiter on your master, just so you can't get audio coming through above zero dB. So you can't accidentally have a feedback cycle totally blow out your speaker. It might sound bad if it happens, but uh, that's just a precaution. I found that out the hard way. I'd rather you didn't also find that out the hard way. And what we're gonna do is play with putting different sorts of effects on our delay chain. So let's try this overdrive plugin. I'm gonna drink the dry wet down a bit. I'm gonna kinda play with this and I can even modulate this on the fly. Now you can see one of the watches or the little dodges is that a lot of plugins increase the volume of your delay. Um, you know, an overdrive plugin will tend to increase volume. So you've got to watch out for that and kind of modulate this volume here or the feedback, but I tend to prefer modulating this volume here just to normalize that. So you're not getting kind of runaway effects where each cycle through the delay is actually louder. You want it always to be a little quieter so that it decays away over time. So this is a super common kind of effect where we're kind of running through this overdrive again and again and degrading the audio signal. Um, another one I really like to do is using the filter delay and using a, an effect called the Haas effect. I actually have a preset I've made for that here. And the Haas effect is very simple. Um, you've probably heard of it before, but if you didn't, the quick kind of summary is that if you split a mono audio signal into left and right channel, or a stereo even into a left and right channel, and you delay either the right or the left channel by a few milliseconds. So in this case, this plugin, our dry is at zero, our left and our right channels are both all the way up and pan left and right. And you can see that our right channel is only delayed by one millisecond, which is really unnoticeable. But our left channel is delayed by, I'm gonna say five milliseconds. And so this means the two channels of the audio are gonna go out of sync and they're gonna go further and further out of sync each iteration through the effect. I'm gonna turn up the feedback. And you can hear, this kind of gives the effect of sound spreading out and almost disappearing into space, which is something I really enjoy. One of the things I like about um, these more complicated delay chains is you can give them these really profound senses of space. You know, they can evolve and decay until they are no more. Um, you can cut all the lows out and kind of pitch them up so they feel like they drift off up into the space, or you can cut all the highs off, have them drift down. So let's try the Haas effect with the overdrive. I'll just bring this down a little, so. A little too much feedback, I think. And Lax add a little reverb. I'm just gonna use a basic Ableton uh, reverb plugin here. And what we're gonna do is add just a little reverb, put it on high quality, play with the decay time a bit. And each time the, uh, you run through the delay channel, obviously you're going to re-reverb the sound. So it's gonna add more reverb each time, and you're also gonna be reverbing your reverb. And so that's gonna produce a very distinctive kind of sound. And the reverb is quite quiet, so we can bring this up. And see how that really starts to evolve the sound and like make it vanish into the ether. It's this beautiful kind of decay that I play with a lot. Um, now you can do pretty much anything you want. You could uh, put a phaser on here. Watch out for phasers and flanges. They tend to cause feedback problems. 
Less so if you put an LFO on them. We could try some other effects. We could do a redux. This might be really harsh. So a redux often adds a lot of like high frequency content that we might not want. So I'm gonna use a redux and then after the redux, I'm gonna add a high cut filter. So you can start to see like almost any effect in Ableton, if you play with it and start kind of feeling out the way that it interacts and evolves with the sound, can get really interesting effects. Now, one final thing um, to kind of help you with playing with this, I find that in a real musical context, I don't have a musical context set up for you, but I almost always play with this sort of stuff over a track and try and really get the delay to fit in. It can be really helpful to MIDI map some or all of the parameters. Um, my favorite one to MIDI map is straight up the volume, which I've already got MIDI mapped here, which is uh, mapped to my uh, controller here. And that lets me kind of push the delay up so it rises and falls and actually have that delay ride along with my music and, and kind of swell and die away under my control. And I'll just, you know, record that in using automation. Uh, very classic effect to have the, the delay move in a way that feels more natural and more organic. So to show you that, You can hear, you can, in this case, kind of make it build and fall. Another one that we could play with, if we go back into MIDI mapping mode, is the down sample rate. So now I have these both MIDI mapped, and we can do something like this. I think that's really beautiful. You can see there's just so much room for creative expression once you set up delays like this. Now, um, as I say, always watch out for volume, always wait to make sure your monitors aren't turned up so loud that you're gonna blow things out. Always use a limiter on the master. And I highly recommend um, uh, resampling and freezing these into audio files once you've finished because they can be really a little finickety and out of control. They're not as controlled as uh, a standard delay plugin would be. Anyway, that's one of my favorite kind of production techniques. I use it a lot to add texture and detail my, to my tracks, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at puremind.com.